You're listening to the Unwritable Rant Podcast with your host and bourbon soak storyteller, Juliet Miranda. Hi there, y'all. It's Juliet. This is episode 121 of the Unwritable Rant Podcast. I have two bourbon soak stories to share with y'all today about schooling a skank and an undeniable explosion. But first, let's kick this new year off with a drink. I'm filling up my glass with Barrel Bourbon Batch 14 today. Cheers, y'all. Oh, Barrel Bourbon. I love these guys. I really do. Each batch of their bourbon is different, but absolutely fascinating. I'm drinking Batch 14 today, and it is cask strength at almost 110 proof. This is a blended bourbon, and it includes just a little bit of their Batch 12, as well as some 9-year bourbon and a little bit of 14-year bourbon. Now, I have had many, many barrel releases, and so far my favorite has been Batch 11, but this Batch 14 is a strong contender. It really represents everything a bourbon should be. Considering the high proof, this tastes ridiculously smooth and silky. Right up front, there's a little bit of cinnamon and honey and rye spice. And then it rolls into this wonderful leather and fruit flavor. I've read some reviews where people with more refined palates than mine claim to taste jasmine in here. Now, I don't, but that doesn't mean it's not there. What I will say is that this bourbon reminds me of a Manhattan. It's sweet and smooth and just a little bit bitter. It's so perfectly balanced, y'all. And I highly, highly suggest that if you're going to drink this, try it straight first. Regardless, this is an outstanding bourbon. And I'll tell you, my guy is going to have to fight me for this bottle. And I'm not someone to mess with these days. Because case in point, I recently ran someone over. I'm kidding, sort of. I didn't exactly run anyone over. But I did knock into them with my car, and I have to admit that once I got past that initial burst of panic, it kind of felt good. Like, so good that I almost wish I hit this person harder. (laughs) I'm guessing this isn't the best way to kick off the new year, especially since the person that I hit is someone my guy and I know. Not very well, really. More in a Mr. Rogers, people in your neighborhood kind of way. You see, this person works at our dry cleaner. Far as I can tell, she doesn't really serve much purpose beyond checking in clothing and running credit cards, which leaves her with plenty of time to be chatty. And here is where my misanthropic tendencies kick in, because I loathe small talk. There are some people who just seem to believe that small talk is the one thing that separates us from the animals. I personally find it excruciating. So unless you have something useful to say, please just spare me the chit-chat, because things will only go from awkward to hostile after that. My guy, of course, is a master of conversation. So whenever we go somewhere, he fills in the gaps when the teller at the bank or the girl at the grocery store will decide to blather on about the weather. And this is how we became acquainted with the chick at the dry cleaner. For the past year or so, she's been chatting my guy and I up. It started innocuous enough, but within the last six months or so, she started flirting with my guy. So much so that she quickly became known in our house as the dry cleaning skank. Despite how I sound, really, I promise you, I don't have a problem with flirting but it has to be in the right circumstances and with the proper intent. I mean, hell, I flirt wildly with our butcher for free bacon and extra sausage links. And my guy is okay with this because, well, one, free bacon, and two, it is resoundingly clear to everyone that I'm not going to be betting the butcher. I certainly can't claim to have always been quite so innocent in my flirting back when I was a single gal. And that's why one of my superpowers now is knowing how to sniff out a potential skank. As they say, evil knows evil. 
My guy really doesn't put a lot of stock in my understanding of womanly wiles. To him, I'm just being hypercritical of mindless conversation that he forgets the moment it ends. But here's the thing. He doesn't catch the sexy little eye darts this chick throws out when she compliments his choice of dress shirt. He doesn't notice how far out of her way she'll go to avoid looking me in the eye. And that is why my guy was wildly unprepared when the dry-cleaning skank's flirting took a sinister turn. Because of course it did. He returned from dropping off the dry-cleaning the other day with an exasperated expression and the sheepish admission that I was right. He had gone into the store, and as usual, there she was, grinning up at him with just a little bit more of a brighter smile than usual, probably because I wasn't with him. And of course she's full of New Year cheer. It barely covers her boiling cauldron of sexual indiscrimination. So she counts out his shirts and comes across one of my dresses, which I can only hope burned her fingerprints right off. And she coos up at my guy. Oh, this isn't yours. It must belong to that woman you're always with. Who is she? Your girlfriend? My guy explains that we're married but he could have told her that I was rainbow bright. That's how little his answer meant to her. Which was particularly evident when she followed up with a coy look and then asks, Do you like secrets? Because I like secrets. Oh, do you, sweetheart? Because of all the thinly veiled pickup lines to throw at a married man, that has to be among the most tacky. My guy is relating this exchange to me. And after doing a quick check to make sure that my firearm owner's card is current, I had to laugh. This skank had a lot to learn, and clearly I was going to have to be the one to school her. I decide that I'm going to pick up the dry cleaning myself. So I saunter into the store, and there is no hiding the disappointment on her face when she sees me. I give her my best fuck you smile, and as I hand her the ticket, I ask, "Hey." Heard any good secrets lately? Any shred of rosy glow she may have had quickly drains from her face, and she's left staring at me, hating me, just a little bit for having a relationship strong enough to defeat her sexy time plans. She silently runs my credit card and goes back to retrieve our clothing. And the whole time, I'm gloating. I'm thinking, take that, you flirty little dummy. And while you're at it, keep your dry-cleaning paws off my husband. But while I'm mentally reveling, Skanky the dry-cleaner is able to regroup, and she comes back with an attack of her own. She hands me the bags and points out my evening dress. She pretends to admire it, and she says, Gosh, what a pretty dress. And such a forgiving cut. It really hides all the Christmas cookies you ate, doesn't it? Hmm. Maybe I underestimated my adversary here. That was a perfectly shitty and wildly bitchy thing for her to say, because I could have been standing there the perfect picture of anorexia, and hearing that still would have put me on guard. But there is no way I am letting this chick get the best of me. So I gather up my dry cleaning and my confidence, and I respond accordingly. If I ever need advice on what to put in my mouth, I'll know who to call. I stomped out of the store then, glad to have gotten in the last word, but feeling absolutely annoyed at myself for letting this silly wannabe homewrecker get under my skin. And really, it was all about her. I have every confidence in my guy and his commitment to us. I just don't like people who don't respect that. So I had a few more errands to run in that shopping plaza. And by the time I was done, the parking lot is covered in a good inch or two of snow. This does not improve my mood. I didn't have far to go to get home, but my rear-wheel drive car is not exactly accommodating to snowy conditions. I slowly back out of my parking space and navigate the lot to the exit ramp, and I eye it with absolute dread. It's the only way out of the lot, and it's set on an incline. Now, my car will fishtail if someone spills a Slurpee on a molehill, so I know that this snowy incline is going to be my Everest. 
and there is a whole lot of spinning and drifting and sliding as I battle that ramp, and it seems to get steeper with every failed attempt. I am swearing, and I am sweating, and I am praying to the tire gods, just let me get the right balance of momentum and traction. And then I hear someone yelling outside my car window. Terrific. It's the dry cleaning skank. She's been standing out there in the snow watching me, and now she's walking toward me, looking exceedingly smug, and she demands that I stop blocking the exit so she can leave. Were this anyone else, I would happily oblige. I'm not so big of an asshole that I'm going to make people suffer for my poor choice in automobiles. But for the dry cleaning skank, can't say I was so inclined. And I think, screw her. I'm going to get this car over the hill if it kills me. Or her. In hindsight, I realize now that I probably hit the gas a little too aggressively. My tires spin for several agonizing seconds. The skank is watching me with amusement. And then she walks closer to my car, acting as my own caustic cheerleader and mocking everything I'm doing. This sleazy little genius smacks her hand down on my bumper and yells for me to give it up. And this? This is the precise moment when my rear end smacked back. It unexpectedly swings out and connects with the skank, knocking her right off of her balance and directly onto her ass. I don't know if it was the impact of knocking into a body, or perhaps karma smiling down, but my tires finally managed to connect with the pavement, and I was propelled over that damn ramp and out of the lot. I caught sight of the dry-cleaning skank in my rear mirror. She was back on her feet and viciously giving me the finger, so I knew she was mostly okay. Nevertheless, I'm thinking it's time we look for a new dry-cleaner. And now, more bourbon. Hang on, y'all. I gotta say, after the past seven days, I do not have a lot of confidence in what this new year holds. I mean, first, I practically run someone over, and then, just yesterday, our townhome complex nearly blew up. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that we had an explosion here. And I don't mean explosion in the metaphorical sense. There was no mistaking this as a hardcore explosion. I mean, it's not something that you would have heard and thought, gee, maybe it's the wind. My guy and I were parked on the couch when it happened just knocking back bourbon and talking. And it was actually my cat who heard it first. She went from just obliviously rolling around on the floor to hair on end and hissing. And before we could even contemplate what invisible things set her off, we hear it. It is an instantaneous boom so loud and so consuming that my initial thought was, we're going to die. This was really the angry kind of blast that can only mean bad things. We're talking War of the Worlds bad. My guy and I both bolt to our feet. And it's funny, really, just how animalistic people become in situations like these. Because all you can really do is panic. We both begin circling the coffee table like a pair of dumbfounded ducks, both quacking at each other. What the fuck? What the fuck? And then there's nothing. We both pause when we realize that the booming terror we had experienced a minute ago has been replaced by absolute calm. We take a very quick inventory. There are no residual rumbles. There's no smoke, no fire, no alarms. But there is one thing. Distinct pounding coming from our neighbor's wall. Oh yeah, that would be the very same neighbors we waged a noise war with this past autumn. Things have been less boisterous over there since our battle of obnoxious sounds, but that doesn't make these people any less of jerks. The three mangled and dented cars that they own are constantly blocking our driveway. They never pick up their dog's crap, and I'm not entirely unconvinced that they're not running a meth lab out of their garage. Still, this pounding coming from them is new. What's more, it was clearly deliberate and definitely aggressive. That sets us off in a whole new panic. What the hell just happened? 
Are those pounds for help? Did these assholes just blow a hole in their living room? My guy and I are actually feeling genuine concern then. Our neighbors could be in legitimate danger. So we debated a little bit, but ultimately we decided on what seemed like the best possible solution. I called 911. It was the first time either of us had called 911, and it wasn't exactly as thrilling as it appears in the movies. Quite honestly, I've had more exciting calls with the cable company. The dispatcher who took my call really had all of the emotion of a toaster. She asked several questions about what I had heard and who was involved, and since I couldn't claim to have seen any flaming bodies or molten meth labs, I felt a little bit like a reactionary fool for calling at all. I even apologized for bothering her. The dispatcher reassured me and said that assistance was on its way, but I hung up wondering if I had done the right thing. My guy and I had been drinking, after all. I knew we hadn't imagined the whole thing, and it's not like our booze was laced with acid, but still. What if we'd overestimated the magnitude of the boom? The neighbors had stopped knocking on the wall, which meant they were either fine or dead. So I suppose a wellness check wasn't entirely uncalled for. And wow, did our town ever deliver. In just three minutes, a fire truck, ambulance, two police cars, and one gas company utility vehicle came screaming into our complex. It would seem that our local responders have certain buzzwords that determine how to address an emergency. And words like explosion sit right at the top of their panic list. This whole cavalry floods under our neighbor's front stoop wearing enough protective gear to take on the Hindenburg. I don't know what all transpired over there, but knowing how this story ends, I can only assume there was a great deal of head shaking and finger pointing right back at our house. So my guy and I are watching all of this happen from our front window, and we're scratching our heads because now this whole tide of the crowd is shifting and it spills onto our doorstep. And then the doorbell rings. Well, y'all, it was a horror movie moment to be sure, because the emergency responders greet us with some kind of unsettling news. Folks, we believe the explosion came from inside your house. What? That's impossible. My guy and I are looking at each other, and although our expressions show nothing but shock, I know my guy well enough to read between the frumples on his brow. He's looking at me and wondering what the hell I did to blow up her home. And quite honestly, I was wondering the same thing. If anyone is going to blow something up, it's going to be me. But we hadn't cooked anything for dinner that night, and the only electric items that I could think of outside of our living room were my curling iron and my blow dryer, and I doubted either of those had the voltage to spontaneously combust. So what the hell? A team of firemen thumps through our house to investigate, while my guy and I entertain two police officers in our living room. It really wasn't our best scene. There's a half-empty bourbon bottle sitting on the coffee table. Empty absinthe bottles are decorating the top of the bar. A pizza box has fallen on the floor. And the TV, which we had forgotten to turn off in the commotion, is blaring out one of my very favorite torture porn movies. And then there is my cat, who is hissing at everyone from beneath the sofa like some sort of rabid beast. And it dawns on me that none of this looks good. One of the officers eyeballs me then, and he says, You know, you look kind of familiar. Weren't we here for a disturbance last summer? And I'm thinking, fuck, he remembered. You see, a different neighbor had indeed called the police and my guy and I, after we had absolutely innocently set off their car alarm after dark. Not that I'm all that anxious to remind him of this, but I'm thinking, how did I allow this to become my life, where my neighborhood police can pick me out of a lineup? Really, this is why I hate the suburbs. It is way too easy to be the number one menace in town. Fortunately, I am spared any further critical assessment from the police when a fireman announces that he has found the source of the explosion. He holds up a hunk of scorched ceramic and asks us if we have a space heater in our garage. Relief zips through my veins, 
and I let out a completely ill-timed giggle. It's his fault. Because clearly we know who the snitch is in this relationship. The garage is my guy's domain, after all. Turns out, he'd left the space heater on, and that thing broke bad in a big way. We can only assume that the wiring went wonky, because that thing blew its lid and shot a ceramic plate straight across the room like a torpedo. It landed on a desk that we had put in storage, and it scorched the living hell out of it. After giving us a very stern lecture on the dangers of space heaters and stressing how much worse this whole situation could have been, the emergency squadron turned off their flashing lights and left our little townhome complex to return to their respective stations and likely add my guy and I to their local watch lists. We, meanwhile, were left minus a space eater, one desk, and any shred of hope that we might one day build a friendly relationship with our neighbors. And now, y'all, I am raising up my glass, and I'm drinking to bourbon, because clearly bourbon is the one stable thing we have here at the Rant Ranch. Well, y'all, I think that's enough out of me. But before I go, I wanted to let you know that I'm going to be in New Orleans for the Pottern Love Convention. It's happening August 10th through August 12th, and you know you want to hang out with me in New Orleans. Come on, just think of all the trouble we can get into. If you want more information on the convention and all the other great podcasts that are going to be there along with me, just go to pottern.love. And here's some extra good news. If you want to get 10% off your tickets, just use the promo code RANT when you check out. If you want to listen to any more episodes of the Unwritable Rant podcast, just head to theunwritablerant.com. Hope you all have a great week. I'll be back next Sunday to chat with you all some more. Cheers. Go to theunwritablerant.com and sign up to get early access to interviews and new videos. You can hear new episodes of The Unwritable Rant on RadioVegas.rocks every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern and on IPMNation.com on Saturdays and Sundays at 6 p.m. Eastern and hear best of episodes every weekday at 3 p.m. Eastern. And don't forget to connect with Juliet on Twitter at Morning Neurosis. Yeah, he was pretty as a Sunday morning, standing on the corner at Carondelet. What you say we make our way up to Bourbon? A couple hurricanes and a hand grenade and get blown away. Let the chips fall where they may. If it's all the same, what you say, bon ton, Hey, pretty mama, I can smell the gumbo Sweetest taste of honeysuckle on my lips Good God Almighty, I can hear the trombone Every heart ought to be to a rhythm like this Come a little closer, honey, let me hold you Nothing tastes better than a bourbon kiss You can be the flower on my magnolia Every heart ought to be to a rhythm like this